<laughs> okay, guys. We got another model at smarthelping.com here. We're doing janitorial slash cleaning services. I just talked to my computer because I didn't have my uh, mic, my uh, recording thing going. So I just ran through this entire model step by step. Every single thing that it has to um, to basically 15 minutes I just wasted. So okay, now I've got it going. So I'm gonna try to to walk you through this again. I really, I mean, I just said all of this. I'm gonna have to say it again. Uh, man, that's frustrating. Um, okay, so what we've got here, it's a five-year model um, for janitorial services. Uh, it's built to fit that industry, which the specific things for the industry would obviously be, um, you know, you've got people that are going to go out and work for you. You can charge the businesses that they're cleaning or offices a rate, then you will project out how many hours you think each worker is going to be doing a month and also when their start date is and that's how we're going to do the revenue. Costs are similarly and then we uh, you know basically wages and then we'll go through all our operating and startup costs. So we've got the instructions here. Man I cannot believe I'm going through this again. This is so frustrating. Instructions on the front tab uh, is your kind of breakdown, your start date. You're going to put this is the first day of the first month. You're going to have, you know, operations going, you know, so clients, services starting and, and cost and financing if applicable. applicable. Uh, then we've got our cash investment. This is all, this is going to be based on what happens in the cost assumptions tab. Um, cost assumptions and revenue assumptions are where your primary places are that you're going to actually build your model. Uh, we've got investor contribution if applicable, financing amount if applicable, and then sponsor contribution which is your or the business owner or whoever's starting the business, that's you. Then we've got project IR, investor IR, and sponsor IR as well as our break even month and year. Okay, so there's that. Um, now, one thing I've added that I haven't had in many of my other models is waterfall distributions. And this is just simply showing, you know, here's the cash flow of the project. This is after debt service. And then you've got, if any, you know, this is zero right now. Let me just put a number in here. Let's put, you know, say they put in 25000 You get them 7%. Now your sponsor is down to 93 and your financing is this. So you can see here, oh, they put out twenty-five thousand of the, the this amount that's required. They're going to get seven percent. And note, this seven percent is diluted with the amount that is being financed by the bank, if any. So if we did, you know, went to our cost assumptions and put zero here, their twenty-five thousand is going to get them. Actually, sorry, no, the seven percent is based on the total cash required. So they're getting diluted by um, any financing that happens. In the, the fact of if there is financing, then the sponsor does not have to put in as much capital, but they're still going to get the inverse of whatever the investor is getting as their return. So you can see here, if I were to put in financing of 50%, now, well, the cash required is only going to be because you're financing 178. The sponsor only has to contribute 153, and this reflects on the IRR. So look at the sponsor's IRR; it's 163 percent. If we put this down to zero, then the IRR is going to be lower. Now look at that. Now everybody's at 75 because it's an even uh, split based on uh, weighted, you know, contributions. So waterfall kind of breaks out each. Each year shows the investor's IRR and sponsor IRR as well as an equity multiple, which this is just saying, you know, well, you've invested through 25000 you're going to get back 93 um, That's a three point, basically a 375% return. Right, 3.75. So 93,000, and that makes sense. 
because 25,000 goes into 75 three times, and you've got another 18,000. That gets another 0.75. Like I said, the spots are going to be the same in this scenario because there's no uh, equity. You can see here in this row, this is the total amount of cash that it took to start the business. And then, so the three inputs of investor, sponsor, and financing, whatever they may be, will add up. It will have to add up to the amount of cash to start, which is here. So this kind of ties everything out and shows visually what's going on. Then I've got a summary of the project. You've got your revenue by year, cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold I've defined as basically labor because you're really, you know, your cost of services is, you know, your labor directly. Uh, same as if you were selling sandwiches at McDonald's, your cost of sales is going to be your food. Uh, gross profit. Then the operating costs. After that, you've got your total expenses, which is operating costs and uh, your cost goes sold and then if you take your revenue less the expenses you've got EBITDA and then you've got debt service right now it's zero so then you got cash flow before taxes I've got a nice chart here to show all of that on an annual basis uh, visual here this is showing well let's see it's showing debt to equity let's put let's say we got a huge debt 75 percent 10 year term now if we go back over to the visual, oh, now it popped in, there's the debt over time, and then here's the cash position of the business act business's activities. And these all change with if you adjust any of these revenue assumptions. Let's say, uh, let's look at this, let's say the last year I started at $1,000 an hour on somebody, I, or I bill out at 1000 an hour, you see in the visual, Oh, last year you get that big spike up, and same in the summaries. Last year changes. So I just want to show you that that does uh, change dynamically. Also, we're gonna sh I'm gonna show you that uh, this works. So we're gonna also put worker one at twenty five dollars an hour, forty hours a month, starting in eighteen. So you'll see in a little bit how that shows up in the uh, P&L summary, monthly summary. Now a little bit on the revenue driver, so this is going to auto populate based on the validation. You do not want to change these here directly because that will, the rest of the model has to do VLOOKUPs and that means it has to match, everything has to flow. So in order to make sure everything matches, you put your data in here at one spot, which is the worker name, it could be worker ID, whatever, it's going to uniquely identify them. You put that in here, and then it flows through to here, as well as the cost assumptions and the P&L monthly and annual. So everything has to match because th this formula is looking up this name uniquely within this table to get the you know to tell if the if it should have they should have started yet and how much money they're earning for the business. So that's revenue. I mean that's all you got basically. You send people out to work and you build the businesses they work at or the offices for a rate. Let's go down. You've got 50 possible workers at the moment. That's how I've built uh, the current thing. It could be easily expanded to 100 workers or 1,000. No problem. Uh, then we've got our cost assumptions. So cost assumptions, this first table of labor costs is obviously matches the revenue. So you don't want to change anything here. You don't want to change their hours per month. This obviously has to, the logic requires it to be exactly the same. Now the wages is different, obviously, because this is what you're actually paying your workers, not what you're billing the businesses for your workers. So this is where you're making your money, the difference between this and the revenue that they're generating. Now this is fully loaded wages. So right here you want to take into account their hourly rate plus what their what would be added to their hourly if you include benefits, bonuses, uh, workers' compensation, ev all that stuff, 401k contributions, everything. So whatever that might be for you, make sure you account for that when you're putting in these hourly wages. Uh, month start, you can change it, but by default, it equals what's on the revenue. 
I don't know what crazy situation could happen. I guess if they start and you don't actually want to start paying them until later, well, or some weird scenario makes that so that's how you want to do the model, you have that option. But by default, the month start, you just want to leave it alone because it's going to be defined when you put it here. And here's where you actually put all these things that flow over. Uh, then you've got your startup cost. So this is going to be what you actually have to spend money on to start the business. So, well, you've got to buy cleaning supplies, cleaning equipment. You might have to get permits, licenses, uh, possibly vehicles, possibly other equipment, cash reserve, uh, maybe a storage facility to store everything. You know, who knows what. I've got, you know, you've got a total of, what, 24 slots here to put things. So that should cover all your major items of pretty much any any kind of business scenario that happens. And I made no notes where applicable uh, in the cells you can see. Uh, so we've got our total startup costs and then you see that 357 flowed all to the other tabs where um, I already explained. This is where you're defining the percentage of the startup costs you're going to finance or get a bank loan for. And then that debt schedule will automatically populate here. These numbers are just for the V lookup for the table, so you don't need to see that unless you want to, it doesn't matter. Um, so there's your startup costs. Now you've got operating costs. So this is what, you know, you if you've got administrative salaries, uh, ad campaigns, marketing, uh, anything where you're spending money on a monthly basis, you can choose the start date that this cost starts. The type, which could be you know general administrative, selling and marketing, research and development, or cost of goods sold, uh, just for your own purposes of displaying what each cost is, and then you've got your actual dollar amount of the monthly cost you put in here. So this is where you're building your uh, you know business case. Now that you've accounted for all the revenue and all the expenses, all the financing, all the investors contributions, every all that thing. You can now look at a PL on the monthly basis. So this shows your year number, month number, quarter, and then the actual month goes out for five years. And you got your revenue per worker. You can see here we made that worker not start until June of 18. You can see right there the logic works. The revenue doesn't start till we assigned it in the table. So perfect. Uh, then we, these workers don't have any start date, so that's zero. Great. Sounds good. Then you got your total revenue. We've also got um, group data groups here, so if you want to expand or collapse to either see a, a total only or see individual detail, you can do that at a click of a button. Then we've got our ongoing labor costs, so this is your cost of goods sold again. Uh, matches the same thing. Total labor costs. After that, you've got your gross profit, which is just your revenue minus labor costs. This is your gross margin. Uh, then we've got operating costs here, and I also changed the date on the first uh, cost just to show you that also does work. It starts in December of 18. Perfect. Then we've got total operating costs. After that, you get to now EBITDA, which is your total revenue less your total operating expenses operating revenue minus operating expenses before debt service. Then we've got our cash flow which is going to be debt service, principal, interest, uh, then you've got your debt balance you can see here for the chart. Uh, then you got your cash flow after debt service so this is what your really your cash inflow is every month based on all those assumptions. Startup costs, actual cash flow out so this is the cash flow out after accounting for what um, bank loan you've gotten and then from there you can see well you start at negative 89,000 you make 30,000 the first month now your cash position is 68 and you can see how that logic flows by month 5 we've got here auto populated that's the break even month where you've your cash the amount of cash you're generating has now covered your startup costs and these will all change as you change your assumptions Okay, there's that. Now there's the annual summary. Same exact thing that I just went over, but it shows everything on an annual basis instead of a monthly. And just to check our P&L monthly, if you look at our cash position, well, let's just look at uh, the cash for IRR. That should match. 
Let's see, we've got 10 million down here. We've got 10 million, 198. 90. Go to your annual. Perfect match, 10 million, 198, 90. So there, everything's tied out. And then you get your debt schedule. Uh, all right, so now that I've said this twice over. Hopefully, you know this video doesn't mess up at all. So now you've got a model for the cleaning and janitorial services uh, industry. I've tried to make it as flexible as possible and as broad as possible, so it will fit anybody's you know attempt at trying to model out the cash flows and financial projections of their potential business endeavor for the janitorial slash cleaning uh, industries. Uh, one thing I would say is this type of business, the startup costs are normally a lot, you know, it's pretty low, especially if you're just starting with a couple people under you to, you know, you, the cleaning supplies are basically it. And, you know, your margins are just going to be what you make, what you charge, your client and then less your wages um, and then you can grow from there this is models fully f dynamic and functional to really show you know if you have plans for growth you can really use those start dates to um, articulate that very easily uh, right so I think that's it we got through it if you want uh, to buy this model, you can click the description box below. It will have a link to smarthelping.com, which is my blog. Um, I'm, this will be a mid-level model, so that means a one-time fee of $45, and I'll send it over to you. Any additional work you need on it is $40 an hour. Obviously, if there's any miscalculations or errors that you do find, I will fix that for free. Um, but other than that, you know, that was the video walkthrough, so it should help anybody that you know wants to go step by step through the video while using it themselves they can do that obviously the video is going to be public for free for everyone to see and I guess that's it um, oh note when you if you do purchase it email me at jason at smarthelping.com or go to the blog to you know under the contact and just tell me uh, what model you've purchased and um, then I can see via your email to confirm it and send you the model. All right, that's it. Have a great day. I'll see you later. Probably try to get one or two more Excel models out this month, but that's kind of where I've been pacing.